The advanced multimodality image guided operating room is uh, codenamed Amigo, uh, has been uh, the product of over two decades of work by uh, faculty at the Brigham. And the conceptualization, the engineering, the uh, design of the physical facilities, the physical and software integration of all the modalities is something that just has not been done in medicine ever before. The Amigo Suite is a game changer for surgery, particularly around malignancies. This is the opportunity to do more and better with less, less injury to the patient. If we can do it in a better way, in a less invasive way, and in a patient safety way, this is a quantum leap for the profession. The genius of the design is that it's, uh, Amigo is basically a three room suite with a tremendous amount of infrastructure supporting it. The middle room is a traditional operating room. And if you took the imaging devices away, you would say this is a nice modern operating room with 21st century lighting and navigational tools and a modern table that could do a wide variety of surgical procedures. In that room, we have image guidance modalities that you might find in other operating rooms, a fluoroscopy unit, an ultrasound device. But the, the real special things are the MRI and the PET-CT scan. Now, putting an MRI near an operating room uh, creates a tremendous amount of logistical and uh, safety challenges. The uniqueness of the design was to put the MR in a separate room uh, outside of the OR with a very sophisticated radio frequency shielded door that can close the MR off from the operating room when it's not in use so that if we're doing a procedure that doesn't require the MR, you can do a regular surgical procedure, the MR would have no impact. But if we're doing a procedure that requires the MR, the MR is mounted on a railing in the ceiling, the door magically opens, the MR moves in, surrounds the patient on the operating table, and because of the higher field strength, within a minute or two we can get intraoperative images, and then the MR moves out of the way and the operation can continue. It also allows us, if there are procedures where we don't need the sterility of the operating room but would like to have MR guidance, you could do that procedure in the MR room. The other room uh, contains a, a PET CT scanner. It's a combined device that is both a CT scan, a high resolution CT scan, and a PET scan or a positron emission tomography device. These devices have been in clinical use now for a, a little under a decade uh, and are extremely powerful because you get the high quality spatial resolution of a CT scan that can see very, very small objects in the lung or the brain or the liver and other organs with the functional imaging capability of a PET scan, which takes up radioisotopes, takes a picture of their distribution and shows you metabolic activity in different types of pathology. And then the images from the CT and the PET are fused. And so you can see in a pathologic structure effectively how aggressive it is and uh, get information about the differential diagnosis. One of the very unique aspects about our image-guided therapy program is that it's received tremendous recognition and support from the National Institutes of Health over the years. About 10 years ago, Brigham and Women's was named as a National Center of Excellence by the NIH and we're called the National Center for Image-Guided Therapy. That designation provides us with some sustaining support from the NIH in general, from the National Cancer Institute, from the National Institute for Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering and the National Center for Research Resources, which allow us to build on the uh, support from uh, the public institutions like the NIH to build a center where we can innovate and also train people in the rest of the country. So that uh, public-private partnership between NIH and our physicians and scientists has been a critical element in the success of this program. One of the roles that Amigo plays for the institution is not only is it a super duper operating room, but it's also a scientific laboratory. And this is again something that's very much a part of the Brigham and Women's culture, that when we try clinical innovation, we do it in a way that can inform future practice. Patients that have procedures in the Amigo suite uh, have the procedures done according to a experimental protocol. Uh, that's approved by the Institutional Review Board. Uh, we collect uh, exhaustive information about the 
uh, procedure itself, its duration, its complications, its outcomes, how imaging was used, how frequently and how optimally it could be used. And all of this information is carefully recorded to try to help us identify the optimum way to use this advanced technology and identify the patients that can benefit from it the most. So an important part of what we do is uh, to run this laboratory environment with all the safeguards uh, for patient safety and security that you would expect in a clinical laboratory. And that's why we involve our IRB and why every uh, Amigo patient at the moment is on a research protocol. Because the suite exists in an atmosphere of investigation and innovation, we're able to try procedures that have never been done before with different combinations of imaging guidance, try to objectively assess the results and their impact, and come up with impro constant improvements to make sure that uh, we can use this precious resource as effectively as we can. Our goal is to uh, disseminate our results to uh, practitioners around the world and to patients around the world uh, to help others uh, use technologies like this, perhaps not as elaborate as Amigo, but uh, maybe using an, a single modality instead of these multiple modalities to bring image guidance to uh, commonly done surgical procedures where the addition of imaging again could add speed and add to the quality of the outcomes. I think it's fair to say that a uh, suite and a facility like Amigo is really only possible in an organization like Brigham and Women's Hospital that has had the kind of forward-looking visionary leadership that we benefited from. The leadership believed in the promise of establishing our organization as a national and international leader in the field of image-guided therapy in general and image-guided surgery in particular. And it's our job now to deliver on that promise, but it could really only happen in an environment like this.